us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Your brothers and sisters approaching the altar of God, recognizing that we ourselves are the sacrifice united in Christ, who is the Lamb of sacrifice, who is the Lamb of God offered for us and our salvation. We come before the Lord, bearing our hearts, so that he may strengthen us in his grace. Let us acknowledge, therefore, our sins, and that which keeps us far from God, so that we may more worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when by your gift we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go, join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip then came to Azotus and went about preaching the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out with joy. Let all the earth cry out with Bless our God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appeal to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. 
Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. As we've entered into uh, the sixth chapter, or, have, or quite a way into it already, uh, the sixth chapter of St. John, and we have the Bread of Life discourses where Christ Jesus is uh, revealing himself as uh, the bread of life, as the bread that God sends to nourish the world, the bread and, and the food that gives life um, to to, to, to the people chosen by God and led by him on the way of life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. And as we've been hearing these words of Christ Jesus in the gospel following Easter, as we've been hearing from our Acts of the Apostles and all the different encounters of Stephen, of now Philip, we are, we are putting into effect the very mysteries that we were taught and instructed by Christ in his three years of public ministry. So what Christ Jesus taught as he would walk with his disciples, what Jesus uh, revealed as he would cure the sick and heal the blind and 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 cleanse lepers. All that good was an instruction that was leading us to understand more fully the very mysteries of the testament of Almighty God, the covenant and his word spoken unto us, that all will be taught by God, and that what has been revealed by the prophets, what has been revealed even by nature itself, even by nature itself, that what is revealed in this in this order, is oriented through Christ, crucified and risen, to new life in God. That we have a place in, a rela in our relationship with God. That God is not merely a distant creator and we mere creatures who are forgotten and lost going about our business. Or that he is some intelligent designer who just has, as it were, created some plaything, spun it into being, and, and now it's running its course. No, that God is intimately provident as a giving father and mother, one who gives life and nurtures and cares for. You are cared for, and you are being fed, fed by the sacraments, fed by the word of God, fed by those promptings of the Holy Spirit in, in whom you have been anointed and, and chrismated at baptism, at confirmation, 
that the Holy Spirit is speaking within us. But there's a lot of noise as well, isn't there? Look how life is consumed by noise and how easily this noise is picking up in the world. It used to be that television programs would run for an hour or so in the evenings and just a few channels on the, on the, on the tube. Of course, now we have hundreds, if not thousands. Now there's constant streaming. Const Imagine what that means. It's constantly streaming, meaning a barrage that never ends. Think of the radio waves that pass through the air. You just have to have a transmitter or receiver and you can pick up hundreds of sounds and noises. And so there's this noise that's polluted our world, ourselves. But we can, if we listen, begin to hear the Holy Spirit that breathes and speaks life in us to be fed by the word of Almighty God and to be fed on Christ Jesus himself who is, uh, is the very bread of life, who is the very life of the world that gives himself even sacramentally and substantially for us to be nourished not merely as something that sustains our earthly being, but something that nourishes our body and soul, even becoming a part of us, that God becomes a part of us in our physical existence. So that as we go about this life, this world, we may, we may recognize him and reflect him in our lives. And just a final note on today's um, first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the messenger, messenger, that is the one who carries the message of God, spoke to Philip. So he received this prompting. Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. And there, as he came close to the chariot, what does the, the scripture say? Seated in his chariot, the prophet was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet. How do you hear someone reading? How do you hear someone reading? It, so what, what is the eunuch already doing here? But he's, as it were, consuming the word and the prophecy of Almighty God in the Old Testament in, in a full bodily experience, even giving voice to it. That, it is, that, that what he is reading is not merely seen, but is heard, is received, is lived in the fullness of our being, as limited as it may be. And that way, Philip engages with him, instructs him, and, and then baptizes him, washes him clean, and sets him out anew. And as his, and as as this eunuch is, um, as this eunuch is is baptized and and restored to fullness of life, when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Continued on his way rejoicing. So when we have this encounter with the Lord and the, and, the, and the message of the Lord and the promptings of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't suddenly mean that we change course and suddenly our lives must take on a new luster. No, it means we continue on our way rejoicing. So let us have this encounter with the Lord, the bread of life. Let us receive him totally and fully in ourselves body and soul, word and deed. And as we receive him, let us continue on our way rejoicing. Go rejoicing today and every day of your lives, knowing that you are hearing the voice of God and responding to it. Amen.
with boldness and renewed vigor, we come before the Lord, knowing that he hears and answers our prayers, not according to our will, but his, that is, our eternal life in him. For the church, may the grace and love found in the sacraments help us to draw closer to the abundant mercy of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all elected officials and government leaders, may the Holy Spirit help them be attentive to his prophetic message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who know bodily or spiritual hunger, may God's providence bring them relief and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, may the gifts of God's word and the Eucharist nourish us and make us grow in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, and this morning especially, we remember Jim and Millie Passanisi. May Jesus, the living bread, raise them to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers written in our book of remembrance, those we have been asked to pray for, and those we lift up from the depths of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Merciful and loving God, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers and that you give us the courage to receive your holy word and to live it out in our lives by voice, by word, by action, by deed, so that we may always reflect your mercy in the world so much in need of it. For we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as without end they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, <clears throat> informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lord, 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 the Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only save the Lord and my soul.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The 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 body The body of Christ. 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 body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and, and is risen. Alleluia. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us ever remember that Christ indeed has died for all, for all the sins of the world, past, present, and future, for all the sins of mankind. Christ died for all. But how many of us actually do live in that mystery? And so let us be faithful every day as we aspire to rise again in him. So as we
continue along the way, we may do so with rejoicing and constancy and take advantage of that gift that the Lord has offered to one and to all, knowing that we find our place in him always at the right hand of Almighty God himself. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Evangelist, all holy men and women, 